one shout from the mountain top. Lift up your voice, O Jerusalem, and say to the people of God's own land, Behold, behold your God. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord. A voice cries out. Good afternoon. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. My name is Kathy Kemp, and I will be your cantor at today's Mass. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Bob Gorski, and the intention for today's Mass is Reverend Bob Kuto. This weekend is the annual collection for the Retirement Fund for the Religious. Envelopes can be placed in the offertory basket with the regular weekly collection. Thank you for your generous support. Missalettes and calendars are available at the exits to the church. Please feel free to take one with you. Information regarding Christmas Mass is available in the bulletin, on the parish website and Facebook page, as well as at the exits to the church. We encourage all parishioners to take a flyer with them after Mass today. In order to preserve the sacredness of the Holy Mass, Kindly silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. We ask you to please stand. Take a moment to greet those around you as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord 
be with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Before we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a few moments and call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad tidings. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord in my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you, in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Hallelujah. My friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So you can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you're not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. The third Sunday of Advent is a Sunday of joy, a Sunday of hope. Some might say, well, in light of this past year, 2020, what do we have to be joyful about? Well, that may be true. It's been a tough year. But there is that second word, hope. We have hope. For the future, we have hope that things are going to get better. And we find, and we look at our Judaic Christian tradition, that when people hope, they also prepare. Prepare is important. Now, I was thinking about preparation. A story came to mind from my youth. I can remember when I was just, I think, pre-teens, around maybe 10, 11 years old. My parents had divided their house lot in two. We had bought a corner lot and had this other lot that was connected to the property. And my parents decided to divide their property in half, sell the house on the corner, and build a brand new house on the other half of the lot. And so the preparation for the lot began. Now the lot had to be prepared for the foundation. So they brought in a bulldozer. Right in the middle of the lot was an old 
apple tree. And I can remember when the bulldozer came, because being 10, 11 years old, this was exciting. The bulldozer put down his blade and went right after that apple tree. Put the blade right up against it and pushed that tree, and the tree went nowhere. Didn't move. Came back again, rammed it again. This time, most of the apples in the tree came down around the guy's head like hail falling from the sky. And I'm laughing watching this whole thing go on. He is not amused at all. Digs the blade a little bit deeper, and eventually, of course, the tree gives way. And they begin the process of preparing the lot, removing all the loam, getting down to the sand so they can then put in what is necessary for the foundation. putting in the piping, the sewer, the water, all the necessary stuff for a livable home, for a house. It took preparation. As a seminarian, the way that I sort of paid my way through seminary college, now this is the time when seminarians were responsible for their own loans, their own tuition. The diocese didn't pay for it the way they do now. So these kids have it lucky. So in order to pay for that, we'd get a summer job. So there were three of us seminarians that decided that we were going to go into the house painting business. So the first rectory, the first house that we painted was the rectory in Exeter. And we put a sign out for the parishioners to see as they left church on Sunday morning, the name of our painting company, which was called Painters Perfecto. And the people would come out, and they saw the work we were doing, they could see it getting, advancing each week, and that got us more work. So eventually, we got through four years of college painting houses in the summertime. We had to prepare the house for the paint. You just couldn't go there and just slap paint on the house. You had to prepare, scrape the house, get rid of the old paint, make sure there's no moisture in the wood, do all the things necessary to put down a good layer of paint to make sure that it would stick. Preparation was important. Preparation, John the Baptist realized was important. And the people of Israel knew that preparation was important. They were preparing for Messiah for thousands of years. And so the way they prepared was by reading the Scripture, listening to the prophets, going to synagogue, once a year going to the temple, Offering sacrifice, fasting, praying. These are all things they did in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. They didn't just sit there and hope. They prepared. And John the Baptist comes along and says, in light of all that we've done, There is still one more thing that we must do. There is one more obstacle that we need to get rid of. And that one obstacle, just like the valleys need to be filled in and the mountains laid low, that one obstacle is sin. That was snow, by the way. Perfect timing on that. (laughs) The one obstacle is sin. And so John says, let's get rid of that obstacle. Let's repent of our sins, come and be cleansed, be baptized, and prepare for the one who is to come, the one who comes after me. And so... 
our tradition has a history of preparation. And as Christians, we prepare not just to recall the nativity of the Lord, but also look forward to his coming again. And so we look towards that day with hope-filled expectation and with joy that God is going to come again. But in the meantime, we prepare for that day. And how do we do that? We do that sort of the same way that they did back in ancient times. We read the scriptures. We listen to the prophets. We reflect upon the gospels, the word of God. We receive the sacraments of the church. We confess our sins. We fast and we pray. And above all, we perform acts of kindness for one another to show that we care and love one another. One of the things that I think that we're all sort of preparing for at this time is the COVID-19 vaccine. I think we just want to get all this COVID stuff behind us. Well, we can just sort of get back to a semblance of normal life. But that is going to require some preparation on our part. This virus isn't just going to disappear. And science tells us that just because you get a vaccine doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay instantly. That it's going to take some time. It's going to take some preparation. And that preparation is that we continue to wear a mask for the safety and well-being of those around us. We continue to wash our hands to sanitize them. We continue to social distance. We continue to do all those things that are essential for our safety and the safety of those around us. And the other part of that preparation is getting the vaccine, trusting the science, believing what the doctors are telling us, and following their example so that we can make the society healthy once again. And that requires preparation on our part. So as we go through this Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy, the Sunday of hope, we are a hope-filled people, but we are also a people who believe in preparation. So let us prepare the way of the Lord by the way we treat and love one another and do what is right for the health and well-being of each and every one. Let's together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. We have spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With rejoicing hearts full of faith, we pray without ceasing. For the church, during this holy season of Advent, that we testify to Christ by rejoicing in him always, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our country during these winter months, that we serve the poor and needy in a spirit of Christian charity, we pray to the Lord. For those in our parish who feel their faith is being tested, that they may find abiding hope in the Advent scripture, we pray to the Lord. For those who are distressed about the upcoming holidays, that they may join with others in establishing new joyful memories, we pray to the Lord. For all who form this worshiping assembly, that we may be united in prayer and thanksgiving to God, we pray to the Lord. That men and women called by the Lord to be messengers of his word as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life will zealously proclaim the good news of salvation, we pray to the Lord. For all petitions brought to our shrine seeking the intercession of St. Jude, we pray to the Lord. For all of the sick, especially those whose names are listed in our parish bulletin, that God will heal them and restore them to good health, we pray to the Lord. For what else shall we pray? For these intentions and for Reverend Robert Kuto, we pray to the Lord. Well, God, you have done great things for us. Strengthen us as we follow John the Baptist's call to change our lives. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of worship, Lord, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ, who is our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You there, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. Now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. When about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. We make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people. May you keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. And just have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity, the new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Just have uh, one announcement. Uh, with the increase of uh, COVID-19 going throughout the whole country, but also increasing here in New Hampshire, and even in Londonderry. Uh, we've had a case of 10 families at St. Mark's who have come down with COVID. That's just in one parish. Uh, two of our priests in the diocese have contracted COVID as well. So this virus is on the rise. Uh, so what I'm going to ask you to consider is this. For your own safety and well-being, if at all possible, at least through the holidays, maybe consider staying home. Uh, and watching the Mass live stream. If you wish to come in after for communion, uh, we can do that. But that's entirely up to you. But just putting it out there for your own safety and well-being, it might be wise uh, just to stay home and be safe. The Lord be with you. And with you, The mighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.